What's going on guys? So before we start the review, I just want to talk about something that's really important to me and something I'm actually super duper excited about. So I know we're going through kind of an uncertain, gloomy time and it's getting a lot of people down in the dumps, but the good news is there's a silver lining, okay? I have some of the best, most supportive viewers in the whole wide world, a whole lot of them, and uh, I know the T3 army, we are not going to sit idly by without trying to make a difference. So I'm sure by now most of you are aware that everything, especially in the United States, is shut down. Even the schools are closed early. And initially, even I thought that that was kind of fun, like, okay, we're giving the kids kind of an early extended summer vacation. That sounds great. But the unfortunate truth is uh, it's not that great because about 22 million children all across the United States actually rely on either reduced priced foods or free food from the schools to get their food for the day. And with school not being in session, it means a lot of kids are potentially not eating. Now, I don't know about you, but hearing that broke my heart. It made me frustrated. It made me kind of scared. And that's kind of the whole theme of this crisis. It's that feeling of helplessness. We don't know if we can do anything to help. We don't know if there's any way to help at all. Well, now we can all help because at my store, the Time Teller Shop, I'm offering two pretty cool limited run t-shirts and 100% of the net proceeds will be given to nokidhungry.org. And when I say all net proceeds, I mean all of it. I'm not keeping any for myself. So here's how this works, okay? When I sell something on my store, thetimetellershop.com, Shopify, the people that host my website, do take a small percentage of whatever I sell, and then Printful, the people that actually print and ship the t-shirts, also take a small percentage automatically. But everything that's left, which is a good large amount, gets sent to No Kid Hungry. So guys, if you're as frustrated as me, if you wanna make a difference, here's how we can do it. I know, for a fact, I have the best most supportive viewers in the whole world, and I am so blessed to be able to say that. So guys, let's all pitch in. Heck, I'm even gonna be buying some of my own shirts. And uh, yeah, limited time, guys. I'm probably gonna offer these until the beginning of June, so please jump on it. I'm gonna have a bunch of really cool colors for you to choose from. I think the two designs are pretty cool. There's one more mature version of my beautiful profile. And there's one pretty funny version that I think is really cool. And uh, I teamed up with Doodlehoff, the very cool designer that made my first design t-shirt, uh, the kind of silhouette of my face. And he has a bunch of really cool artwork on his Instagram. You can check it out here. Uh, really, really talented dude. And I couldn't have done it without him. He didn't even charge me for these designs. Um, I asked him, hey, do you want to help out so we can kind of try to beat this bug and do something good? And he's like, yeah, how can I help? I'll get on it right away. He, he, just amazing. So special thanks to Doodlehoff. Check him out on Instagram and support him because uh, he's making this all possible. But yeah, so sorry, didn't want to take up a bunch of your time. I know you're here to watch a watch review, but um, I figured this is a really good way that we can all come together, we can all help, and hopefully this will all be over soon. Anyway, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed, and enjoy the show. What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller, and it's time for another unboxing and review. Now guys, how did you enjoy that Wish Watch unboxing, huh? That was a bit of fun, a little bit disgusting. Don't worry, I sanitized the work area as best as I could, and today the watch we're going to be looking at is a bit more legit uh, when it comes to functionality and overall build. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping because it comes from a company most of us know and love and this watch is very highly recommended. Let's go ahead, uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon and let's cut open this package and see what we're gonna look at today. I'm currently wearing my Seiko Tuna SBBN 031 and it is right about 12.45 p.m. Let's get down to business. Alright guys, it's once again time to do the dang thing. Let's cut open this package. Have a look at what we are reviewing today. Ugh, dust everywhere. Foam everywhere. Oh well. Good as new. All right, another Casio, guys. Now this is not the Casio Duro, but if you wanna see my Casio Duro review, click up here and check it out. So what could it be, guys? It's not the Casio Duro, it's not a G-Shock. Hmm, could it be 
an edifice? That's right, it is a Casio edifice. Now there's a bunch of them, but today we will be looking at the EFA 120D 1A VCF. Now I was very interested in this watch because of the functionality. It has one really cool attribute, um, but also on Casio's website, when I was looking at their various edifice watches, this is listed under their dress watch section. Now when I took a look at it um, online, it didn't really strike me as a dressy watch, but I suppose when you compare it to other Casio edifice watches, it's a bit more elegant. Um, but I just kind of got a kick out of this. I, I, I guess um, the watch in this box, according to Casio, is a dress watch. So let's just open it up. All right, so this is the first time I am seeing this. Got a rubber band. Let's see. I thought this was like a fortune or something. Take it off uh, the stand. And guys, pay attention to this whole episode because I will actually be giving this watch away to one of you guys. I'll tell you how to do it uh, at the end here. All right, check this baby out. Let's take off. Oh, so satisfying. Um, not a bad looking dial, a little bit busy, um, but man, catches the light nicely. Uh, kind of these little, I don't know if you'd consider those sub dials, uh, but they pop, the indexes pop. Um, a little bit of a glare magnet, but that's not totally a bad thing. Hey, a little bit of flash and pizzazz never hurt anybody. Now let's go ahead and take off the rest of this uh, protective plastic. See the most easiest way to do it. You know, this is like everyone's favorite part according to the comment section and it is like my least favorite part. I know, first world problems, right? I'm sick of taking off plastic on all these various wristwatches. Okay, so when it comes to a lot of Casio watches, especially, you know, with their G-Shocks and their Edifice series, uh, there's a bunch of functionality. So we're gonna have the reference number to this watch up here in the corner of the episode, but um, you can expect, you know, it has an EL backlight, has afterglow, it has world time with 50 cities and a 100 meter water resistance rating. But there's one attribute that this watch has that really kind of blew me away um, especially when we're looking at the price of this watch. Okay, this watch, this specific edifice has a thermometer function. That's really cool because my Casio G-Shock Mudmaster also has a thermometer. It has the altimeter, barometer, compass, and all the other stuff. Um, but that Mudmaster is way, way more expensive than this little edifice. That's right, my Mudmaster triple sensor started out in the 700s. Uh, now you can find them around the 500s, but this edifice I was able to purchase on Amazon for $51 on the button crazy amounts of value here. And again, it comes from a company I truly do trust. Uh, just a whole bunch of functionality. Uh, we're gonna play with it a bit more. We're gonna put it on the wrist. I'll probably need to resize this bracelet. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you how it feels and I'll tell you what it's like. All right, guys, as we have the Casio edifice kind of laying down here on the microfiber, I've been thumbing through the booklet, okay? So the, for the first time ever on the Time Teller channel, I've broken out the booklet, and I'm actually very relieved because according to the diagrams, this pretty much sets exactly like a G-Shock would. Uh, and again, I don't have much um, familiarity with the edifice series, but I'm very, very familiar with G-Shocks, so it's kind of a breath of fresh air seeing that again the a b and c and d diagrams kind of correlate to the buttons so i can go ahead and set all the pertinent information to my time zone and again for instance here uh, this would be the thermometer feature uh, it's in celsius i live in the united states we use fahrenheit please proceed to argue in the comment section um, but yeah guys again um, out of the box this is not necessarily going to tell me all the accurate information for where i live so uh, setting it exactly Exactly like I would most G-Shocks. Kind of a no-brainer, kind of easy. So let's go ahead. I'm going to set this information uh, to where I live. We can go ahead and resize the bracelet. 
and uh, yeah, we can move on. Okay, so real quick, I did just encounter something that was kind of interesting. As you can see, um, there is obviously multiple digital displays uh, and then two analog hands. We have an hour hand and a minute hand. So apparently, um, to set all the digital information, you're just gonna hold down this button, this top left button, and you can see it flashing. We've all seen this with our G-Shocks. Uh, we can go ahead and set all the information on the digital displays in timekeeping mode. But to set the analog hands, there's actually a different process to go through. Um, and I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. Let me go ahead and kind of set all this information. I'll put it on Fahrenheit. I'll change the date and the day. And of course, change the digital time. Okay guys, so as I was saying, it really took me no time at all to set all the digital displays to give me the readouts that are pertinent to me. As we can see, the date and the day are all accurate. Uh, the digital time is all accurate. It's set at PM, which is what I want. And uh, the thermometer here is set in Fahrenheit. Now, guys, it is not 88.4 degrees in here, but there are ways using the booklet to calibrate the thermometer so that it fits within a certain parameter. Also though, um, just like with any wrist-worn thermometer device, so whether it be this watch, my G-Shock Mudmaster, or maybe like a ProTech, anything, um, they recommend that if you want the most accurate reading possible, you don't have the watch on your wrist or in your hands. Because again, your body, whether it be your fingertips or your wrist, uh, it's going to give off its own heat source that's going to manipulate uh, the, the um, thermometer reading. So what they recommend you do is not only calibrate it using the booklet, but also uh, if you want the most accurate reading possible, they recommend you leave the watch in a certain environment that you want uh, the temperature read and you kind of let the watch uh, calibrate itself with the surrounding environment, and then that way you will get the most accurate reading possible. I know, kind of a bummer. It'd be cool to just be able to wear it on your wrist, but of course, your body is a heat source, and just me holding on to this watch is affecting uh, that heat. So, or I should say, affecting that temperature. Um, but as you'll notice, the time, everything else set exactly like I want it to except for the analog display. So how do we do that? Well, what we're gonna do is press this button six times, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're gonna hold down this top button until the digital display starts flashing. Okay, there we go. So it's flashing, as you can see, HS stands for handset. Now here is the kind of quirky thing. You can either tap this button down here, bottom right, to advance the minute hand, 20 seconds it said, which will take forever, or you can just hold it down, and it moves. Kind of slowly, um, still not as quick as I'd like it. It's taking a while, but we'll have Gato the editor speed this up. <laughs> All right, another quirk, actually, guys, um, sorry to jump in here. There's a lot of resistance on these buttons. I'm a fairly strong dude, and it's like kind of annoying having to push down these metal buttons for not a lot of movement. Uh, yeah, this, this is the least intuitive, most frustrating part about this watch so far. Ugh. Man, this is annoying. Oh my God, I need to give my fingertips a, a, a rest here, guys. Okay, we are at one o'clock. Now we're gonna move down to 21. Okay, that's as accurate as I'm gonna get it because I don't feel like doing this any longer. Okay. All right, guys, so now that we got all that figured out, again, setting all the digital displays was very, very easy, very intuitive. Setting the analog display, or the analog hands, I should say, not that fun. But let's go ahead and look at some of the other menus. Now, to get you to the other menus, just like any other digital watch, there will be a dedicated button. So right now, seems to be this lower left-hand button will take you to the other menus. So you got your stopwatches, uh, your record features, uh, your timer, alarm, uh, and your world time, WT world time. So this arrow button is kind of like your cursor or your mouse, and that's gonna let you cycle through each uh, menu. So where do we wanna put it? Let's just put it, hmm. Don't wanna do LAX because that's where I'm from. Let's find another cool city. 
New York, why not? The Big Apple. Now let's find something outside the US. Okay, Sydney, down under. Okay, so my favorite part when it comes to these watches is checking out the backlight. And this watch does have that EL backlight. The room is very bright right now. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get a low light shot for you a little later on because it seems like there's some loom on the analog hands that I definitely wanna check out. Um, but let's go ahead and resize the bracelet and uh, I can kind of give you my opinion on how it feels on the wrist. All right, here it is guys, a Casio edifice on my wrist for the first time ever. And honestly, I stand by my initial confusion. I don't know how dressy this is. I don't know if I personally would categorize this as a dress watch. It's cool. It's very, very functional. Again, not super dressy in my opinion. Um, another issue. Do you hear that? Let me bring it up to the mic. Yeah, this bracelet's comfortable, but it's not the highest of quality. Uh, the clasp has a cool locking mechanism here, two buttons on the side. It locks in very positively, um, but feels very thin and very rattly. And this isn't super loose on my wrist either. It's not that there's a bunch of material moving around. It's just kind of a thin metal, um, again, it's not pulling my hair. It's not doing anything I don't want it to do. It just feels kind of cheap. And again, this watch, what, $51? Um, it is very inexpensive. So I, I, we have to have some perspective here. I'm just reviewing the watch and calling it as I see it. But as we can see here, this watch does fit on my seven and a half inch wrist quite well. Let's go ahead, take it off the wrist, break out my trusty caliper tool, and we can actually take some measurements here. All right, guys, let's first go ahead, take a look at the measurement across. I'm gonna try not to hit this button. I'm gonna put it kind of in between the crown guard, if you will. This isn't really a crown, but you know what I mean. So in between this guard and pusher, try to be as accurate as possible here. Let's see. So 36.4 millimeters across. And then lug to lug, let's see how accurate I can be here while holding this watch, one moment. 43.2 millimeter lug to lug. Now let's see the case thickness, the widest point. 13 millimeters thick on the button. So guys, honestly, this watch actually has some very, very reasonable measurements uh, when we're looking at a very versatile watch as far as it being able to fit on a multitude of wrist sizes. So that's a very, very good thing. Honestly, guys, this watch, incredibly versatile all around. So here it is, guys, a Casio edifice on the Time Teller channel for the first time ever. And I gotta say, I am impressed. I like this better than the Casio Duro. I still would probably pick a G-Shock over this watch, but for those of you who don't like the kind of uh, overkill chunkiness of a G-Shock, this Casio edifice has very, very reasonable measurements and a ton of functionality. Again, that thermometer, uh, most G-Shocks don't even have that. And for 51 bucks, this crushes the competition. Now, speaking of competition, I wore my Seiko Tuna for this episode on purpose, okay? Um, when we look at these watches, they don't really scream rivals. Even when we look at some of the other diver-esque Casio edifice watches, I don't really see these as rivals. But ever since I did my Seiko Tuna unboxing, people in the comment section told me that I should forget about the Seiko and pick up an edifice. Honestly, they're kind of incomparable. I think it's apples to oranges. Um, yes, they are both kind of sporty watches on bracelets, but the Tuna is like a through and through tool watch built to the hilt, uh, seven C46 movement. And for those of you who kind of want to minimize the seven C46 movement as just another quartz movement, yeah, that's a great oversimplification. And then, yeah, I guess you could compare it to just any other battery powered watch, but that's clearly not the case with this over-engineered Seiko Tuna. Now the Casio Edifice, Totally different price range. Again, uh, this is like a $1,300 Seiko Tuna. This is a $51 Casio. There is 
a whole lot of functionality here. This has features the Seiko Tuna will never and would never and could never have. So if you want a ton of functionality, a ton of things to look at, again, 100 meter water resistance rating, some very, very nice, versatile measurements, uh, a really, really cool watch that is probably very durable. I mean, it is a Casio and not a whole lot of moving parts then yeah, pick up this Casio edifice and there's gonna be a link to this watch in my Amazon affiliate store, link in the description below to check it out. Um, but the bang per buck here, kind of hard to beat, right? So here's what I'll say. If you want a truly, truly durable built to the hilt watch, get a G-Shock. If you don't like G-Shocks and you want a Casio that's very, very durable, pick this up over the Casio Duro. It's only like, I don't know, a couple bucks more than a Casio Duro, and you're getting a ton of functionality here. So guys, I do like this Casio edifice. I don't fully understand the dress watch designation. I don't fully understand the comparison uh, to my Seiko Tuna, but it's a very cool watch. And uh, my opinion might not matter in the long run because I'm not keeping this watch, I'm giving it to one of you. So how do you win this watch? Well, you gotta tell me my top three grail cars that's right i mention this pretty much all the time on my live streams uh, a lot of watch collectors are also car enthusiasts and i've mentioned them multiple times so whoever can get the closest or nail it first will win my top three grail cars uh, list them in the comment section and you could win this very cool very unique Casio Edifice dress watch. Okay guys, and as we finish up here, I promised you a low light shot. So let's go ahead and take a look at that EL backlight. Very, very nice, very vibrant. You can easily read all the digital readouts there. Uh, let's take a look at the loom. We'll burn up the dial real quick. And some pretty dang good loom, look at that. So if you really wanted to read the analog time, uh, you will have that ability with those little loom uh, pips there, if you will, on the handset. But honestly, I would just go ahead and push this button and use that digital display. So guys, thank you so much. Again, this one goes out to my channel members. I can't do these reviews. I can't buy these products and unbox them on the channel without you guys. Again, if you wanna go above and beyond supporting the channel, making sure I can do this content long-term, go ahead, click that join button next to the subscribe button. It's essentially YouTube's Patreon. It's like $4.99 a month, and most of that support comes directly to the channel. And again, I can use that to pay the editors, I can use that to buy these products and do these reviews. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, I get all the best support in the world. I have all the best viewers in the world, and you guys freaking rock. We are so close to 100,000 subscribers, and uh, boy, I can't do any of this without you. You freaking rock. So you heard it here first, guys. Casio Edifice, pretty dang cool in my book. And this is probably the most unique one I was able to find, but again, giving it to one lucky viewer. So please like, comment, subscribe. Again, you gotta subscribe to this channel to be entered for the giveaway. Share this with everyone you know so they can hear about this really cool Casio watch. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.